spend a lot of money. But um, a, lot of, a good way to get inspiration, well, I think the only way to get inspiration is by brainstorming. You can't sit there on your own and think, oh, I don't have any ideas. I mean, it's about bouncing ideas around and it's about not being scared to put out ideas that you think might be stupid or won't work. And that's where you have a lot of fun. You know, this is the fun part of your business, the marketing, the PR. You know, a lot of other stuff about it is boring, the finances, the bookkeeping, who wants to know? But, you know, this is where you can enjoy yourself and it's really get heads together and, you know, be creative about it and just brainstorm and you just, you're sitting on gem. Like, I'm sure all of you are sitting on four angles that the three of us could put out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it, wouldn't t it doesn't take us to put it out. You guys can put it out yourself. But you need to start talking to each other about what are your angles. You and know? in what suggestions would you offer to service professionals? So business coaches, life coaches, other consultants? Um, I think particularly for business coaches and think it's about becoming an expert in your industry. So for instance, if you're a business coach and you've come up with the idea that, um, you know, networking is very important, you know, it's a very original idea <laughs> and one that Ben does very well, um, you might go write a press release about why networking is so important. You might do a little survey, you know, commission something to have some factual information and then pitch your story angle to business writers who you feel would write about that topic. Yep. So, yeah, and, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do, is there anyone here who does oh, this, uh, I'm desperate to do this, uh, who does brows, eyebrows? Okay, right, forget. So yeah. what I'm going to say, what, <laughs> and that is, for, yeah, silence, that's right. that is like for small business, the other thing you can do is to jump into trends. So the election, hot, hot, hot. I want to find a brow bar because, you know, like, who's going to get elected based on the eyebrows? If you're a hypnotherapist. Like, if you, if you had a chance with Johnny Howard or, or Kevin Rudd, you know, I'd, I'd be able to give them more self-confidence. Or if you're um, a, any type of business, try and link into what's really topical at the moment. And the, and the kind of the... You don't want too tenuous a link that people just think you're a bit psycho. You just want <laughs> just want something that adds a whole new element to a topic that's probably been done to death anyway. Because, I mean, even in the last week, if you've noticed the marketing, the ads on TV, they're starting to talk about the election in their own advertising oh, campaigns when they have nothing to oh, do with oh. it. We, should, yeah, we right. need three microphones. We have to, <laughs> one microphone between three publicists, just a recipe for disaster. I mean, the hot, the, you know what else is very interesting about the election? And that is they are both using YouTube and the, all the new yeah. media. Yeah. So you can be doing the same thing. You could, in fact, all of you now get your little phones and, and think of some little video and send it up on YouTube and actually be sending people to your website within the next week. We, we actually, Nation, Nationwide <laughs> Networking, we created a viral advert which we mm. put on YouTube, I think it was December last year. It's been viewed almost 70,000 yeah. times since December. Mm -hmm. So, quite a lot of views. Well, just speaking about timeliness and opportunities, one of our clients is Muffin Break, the franchise that you've probably all heard of. And what they've got is currently the Muffin Break bean pole. So, at every Muffin Break outlet, they've got um, cylindrical um, columns where they've listed all the parties. And everyone who buys a coffee is invited to put a coffee bean in who they think will get elected or who they're going to vote for or whatever. And yep. it's quite quirky and cheeky, you know, like the way they've sort of labelled it. And so they've hired us to get the results out there. So we're sort of going to be the unofficial political poll, you know, the muffin break bean poll. So now that is <laughs> an idea that the muffin break marketing kit team came up with by talking to each other and thinking, how can we jump onto the election bandwagon and then, you know, hiring a PR company to do... to to get it out there. Yep. So. Di, tell us, in terms of um, branding us as the individuals, mm -hmm. and we've got the media, but I, with Tara Moss, you're getting, you're getting her on the A-list yeah. and specific events. Mm -hmm. Should we be focusing on targeting different, specific events that we should be there and just be present? 
Uh, yeah, uh, you can do that. There is, there's one thing I just wanted to say following on from that, and I will get to, back to that, is there's a section, two things. If you read the papers and you see things and you think, how did that person get in there? Because I don't think their story is that interesting. You know, you might see something about a chef or you might see somebody about, I don't know, a waiter or something, and you think, my favourite books or what do I do on a Sunday or something. They're the things that, to follow up. And my career, too, in The Age is excellent. And they are always looking for people. So, and you have to be very bold and very audacious, very ballsy like me, <laughs> and do it. You know, because it's just what we do. We just pick up the phone and just do it. Like, you can do it. You know, I can see you taking all these notes. You've got a list of media there. You can do my career, <laughs> what I read on Sunday, the two of us. Like, you might have a great love affair with somebody. You might have met someone at a taxi rank or something. <laughs> or the luggage thing, you know. Great relationships, and you've got a relationship, and the two of us and the Weekend Australian, they love all that sort of stuff. So, yes, yeah, being invited to A-list, you're talking about yep. having, putting yourself on A-list. Yep, so... Um, yeah, like making yourself a man about town, like, you know, sort of... Um, that's very easy for us to do. Like, I'm working with a client at the moment, very good-looking young guy, just getting him out to opening nights and things and putting him with a neighbour's star, very manipulating, but um, <laughs> just... That's what we do. <laughs> and, you know, people go, oh, there's that boy. You know, he's got that business in South Yarra, and, oh, he's with that neighbour star. And, you know, they have a photo taken together, and then he goes one way and she goes the other, and they never <laughs> speak again. But it's, oh, it, you know, it adds a bit of colour. But people employ me to do that. People actually employ me. They'll say, um, I've just been employed by a dating agency just for that sole purpose, to make the guy who runs the dating agency an A-lister around town. Good-looking guy, get him out to a few parties, having a Fiona Burns page on a Sunday, get him to a few, you know, football matches and stuff, and so people will know about I it. Guess so a publicist really is good to do that because you can yeah. open the doors, you know, to get all that. But you, you should, if there are... You know, it's like not never missing an opportunity. Like if suddenly you get invited to something at Crown and take all your business cards, go. You know, if there's going to be, you go to a football match. You know, I'm sure a lot of you get invited to football matches and lunches and things. Just really take advantage of it and spread your... Just get out there as much as possible. Spread your... Um, use those business cards and never throw away a business card that you get handed. Keep them because they'll always come in valuable. Fantastic. Now we'll take some questions for our panellists. Ron, question. Right <laughs> yes, it does, very much so. We'll, we'll like one degree of separation from Michael Jackson here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you want that contact, I know. That's true. Right. The other thing is um, PR people live and breathe the media. Yeah. I mean, literally, you know, we hang around news agents waiting for <laughs> magazines to come in. We're a pretty sad lot, actually. Um, and you guys are busy doing your business, you know. You're making chocolates and <laughs> you're, you're installing alarm systems. So um, you don't have time to live in news agents and hound the <laughs> people who... So, you know, by hiring a PR person, you're hiring, you know, someone who is very much into the media and knows who's out there. We make it our job to know what journalist is writing about what, who's moved on to where. Every single month, um, every person in my team takes a journalist out to lunch where we find out how do they like to be talked to, you know, what day is best to approach them with a story, what's their colleague like, you know, are they, you know, do they get shitty at four o'clock in the afternoon or, you know, so it's, <laughs> yeah, um, so it's really... Yeah. The inside information, yeah. the networking. Another question? Yeah, I'm curious whether you've had the, um, whether you've been successful at doing your job yeah. and the leads were generated and the client wasn't ready for them. So actually backfired in that one. Well, um, it is important to 
get your clients or make sh tell them that this could happen and be ready for it. It did happen to me in the early days of my business. I, st I, um, I started doing a dance course called Chakra Dance, which is a beautiful thing. You dance through your chakra points, and it was lovely. And, but um, it was so great, and no one had heard about it. There were the three of us in the class bumping into each other. And I, I said to the woman, Who, how are you promoting yourself? No one knows about this, and it's wonderful. I can do your PR. So she hired me. And um, we got her lots of press, and um, then she ended up with a four-page feature in Body and Soul, which comes out as the insert um, in the Sunday Telegraph, and it's indicated in Melbourne and Brisbane. Anyway, from that, she got so many phone calls <laughs> that her phone basically melted, um, and she definitely was not ready for that kind of an impact. But that did give her the jump start to thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I've really got to get myself sorted here. And she did actually take enough calls and messages to take her business to the next level. Fantastic. But now I've learned yeah. from that. <laughs> and yeah. I do warn my clients that I do not want to even go to a current affair until you've got the team there ready to take the calls. You know, when we put on a good story on a current affair, where we knew we were going to get a lot of inquiries, what we did was we set up a, a phone recording system system. So someone called and said, I'm calling to inquire about the car washing thing that I saw last night, really loved it. Okay, I'll put you through to the recorder. And then that would give all the details. You can call the company on blah, 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 blah. Da, da. And that often that machine um, played for weeks on end and the company just went through the roof. So if they had only one guy cleaning a car <laughs> and um, nowhere to chuck the water, they were going to be in big trouble. Yep. So, yep. yeah, you should be wary of that. Fantastic. One more question. Yep, Kelly. What would you say to make a recommendation? I know this is difficult. I'm interested to hear what each of you would say. Make a recommendation in terms of percentage of turnover that a company should dedicate to PR, not marketing, just PR. What would that be? So, for those that didn't hear it, what kind of percentage would of our business dedicate to PR? I think it depends on your turnover too. Uh, so. Once you know you hit the hundred thousand mark, you actually might want to increase your percentage points. Hmm. Perhaps you can do like zero to five hundred, five hundred to one mil, one Yeah, look, oh, look, look. It's a very, very difficult. Oh, look. I, I'd as a ballpark figure five yeah. percent. What do you reckon? So yeah, you had a comment. So. Yeah, exactly. Oh, here we go. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll give it to you. Sorry. Um, the other thing that's important to remember, there are different types of agencies. For instance, if you're a small business and you don't have a huge budget but you do want to do something, you should go and find a company that specialises in small business, like Sally, or a freelancer, you know, who does not have the overheads um, that therefore they don't have to charge a large monthly retainer. So WordStorm charges a monthly retainer fee of $5,000 a month, excluding GST, and we we'd like to encourage clients to sign on for at least six months. So most small business owners go, what? <laughs> Get out of here. Um, and I'm, we are not the right business for those clients, but these guys are, you know, so, you know, don't, there are lots of different types of publicists working on lots of different types of business models. Um, so don't think they all cost this much or that much. You know, I know a lot of companies who charge 10 grand retainers and some who charge $1,000. And when I started my business, I basically said, how much can you afford? And they said, $2.50, and I was like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, that was the stage I was at then, very poor. <laughs> yep. But... Um, you know, now we've got overhead, so we do have to charge more. So there are lots of different business structures, and it's about finding the right company. The other thing I want to say, if what I always advise, if you do have an advertising budget, to slice 20% off that budget and put that to PR, because you'll get a lot, a lot of value from that 20% compared to the 80% that you'll spend in advertising. Fantastic. Uh, yes, I just wanted to use an example of that. Just recently when the Royal Melbourne show was on, a couple rang me up. They, ran, they run an organic dairy farm up in, somewhere, up in the country. Anyway, they got their first prize of cardamom and 
oh, I can't remember now, I've worked on some, I've got too many recipes <laughs> running around my head. But anyway, it was cardamom and um, it was organic ice cream, anyway, basically, gelato. Huh? Timbrood ice cream, is that what it's called? Yeah, it wasn't called that, but it was something like that. Anyway, what I did was, I, they said, could you do some publicity? Because we just won this, in the dairy section, we just won this cardamom potato, it was. It was part, cardamom and potato ice cream. And I said, oh. yeah, sure, I'll do that. Sounds fabulous. That's got an Great. angle. <laughs> okay, so what do you want to do? And she said, well, we've just won it, and we're just so wrapped, and we're just this little business up in thing. And I said, okay, get me um, two tubs of it to Neil Mitchell tomorrow morning and I'll get him to eat it on air. And <laughs> yep. she went, what? And I said, get two types to Neil Mitchell tomorrow morning. Because I'm thinking Ross and John, oh, Ross won't do it. But Neil Mitchell will probably do it. So lo and behold, I quoted a fee. They put the fee in my bank. It all happened in the same day. Um, I got the, the cardamom potato gelato sent to 3AW. Neil Mitchell talked about it for three and a half minutes, more than paid my fee. And... They couldn't keep up with the supply. Fantastic. <laughs> the Paran market took it on, Victoria market took it on, and I got phone calls. I actually got phone calls from the media saying, can we do a story on that? Body and Soul rang up, you know, the Herald Sun rang me. That was the easiest job I've ever done. It was the easiest <laughs> money I've ever made. Five seconds, one phone call done. <laughs> and it was done. And so they, therefore, if you, and that was just an idea I had, you know, and that's, I use the breakfast shows and answers a lot, or the mainstream media a lot. I'll always send things into the breakfast shop, just something crazy or, so you know. So really, really everything that you're all talking about is just that one little angle. It's just yeah, that, exactly. it's that one hit that we need to get over the yep. line. Yep. What we'll, what we'll do, we'll start wrapping it up because we're going over time now, but we'll get three tips from each of you for oh. getting PR. Yep. <laughs> get okay. your notepads out. <laughs> My tip, create a relevant angle and get it to the relevant yes. journalists. Um, quick example, um, client of our chef's toolbox, it's a party plan system. Their biggest um, amount of consultants are actually in Melbourne, so maybe you, it, you might know one of them. Um, one of our angles was, you know, women empowering themselves to earn, earn a buck um, and we got a, a big story in the Financial Review about a woman, a consultant from the Chef's Toolbox, who was really helping to overcome the stress, the financial stress from the drought. Because she lived in the farm, there was a drought, no money, and so she was um, putting on these party plans and bringing in a lot of money from her family from it. So that was an angle that came out of a brainstorming session by utilising the talent within their business. Angles, creative, thinking outside the square and brainstorming. Fantastic, Sally. Okay, couple. Uh, if you are interested in a particular media, like a particular magazine, you think where your audience is going to be, read it for a couple of weeks or months or what have you. Get familiar with it. If you really want to be in it, be really familiar with it. Then... At, don't send it just to a general email address. Find out like who the health editor is or who the baby editor is or who, find, pinpoint who you want to speak to and you send them an, an email, dear Paul, dear whatever. To get that email uh, address, very, very simple, you just simply ring the phone number that's listed in the editorial bit of the magazine or the newspaper, what have you. Look up on the white pages and ask who, who's the food editor or who's the machinery editor, whoever it is, they will tell you and then get their email address. The other little thing that I do that so many people don't do and that is when you get coverage, I want you to send them a thank you note and a little thank you present. Yep. because they will remember you and that is going to be then the beginning of an ongoing relationship. And I, and I know one thing that really annoys Claire is that if she like gives people coverage and she never hears from them again, it's like yep. any normal business relationship. If you Build wanted, on that relationship. Absolutely. So send a thank you. Yep, definitely. Di, you're three. Uh, well, actually, that was one of mine. I've been doing publicity for like how long? Years and years. And I've had front covers and knockbacks. I've had Channel 9 News editors saying to me, you're not going to get that story on Channel 9 News. Today. I've had phones hung up on my ear. I always say thank you. Always say thank yep. you. Always. It doesn't matter if it's Nui Takawa doing something, you know, in the hit section or whatever. Dear Nui, thanks. Great coverage today. Really appreciate it. See you soon. Whatever. So that's one of mine. Always. People never forget that. The other thing I was going to say is don't take a no personally. 
don't take anything personally. We get told no's all day. I had a day yesterday where no one wanted to know <laughs> about the wrestling. And I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? And I'm good at what I do. And everybody was like, die, go away. Richard said, <laughs> couldn't care less, die, see you around. Awful, awful day. Rang, I woke up today, I didn't sleep very well last night, but I woke up today with a different approach, brand new day.